This is my brutally honest review of The Sims 4 Seasons. This is a part of a series where I review every pack for The Sims 4, including all of the older ones. Cottage living is about living in a brand new world, living off the land, raising and befriending animals, and embracing British village life. In Create a Sim mode, female Sims have a ton of hairstyles to choose from, and it's a really nice variety. They also have a ton of new clothing options with a very clear country theme. The theme was executed very well and I feel like most of the options are great. It definitely has a spring garden vibe to the cast which is nice. Most of the wearables are knitted and cozy looking. There's also quite a few new shoes including some wellies which come in and some nice swatches which I really liked. The men's side of cast was most definitely more of an afterthought I feel like. Only having three hair options compared to the 12 female sims have is just ridiculous. If EA have a problem knowing what men's hair looks Looks like then they either need to contact a hairstylist or google the term men's hairstyles. There's also significantly less clothing for male sims with a lot of designs looking so similar they're basically identical. I know men's clothing is harder than women's when it comes to variety but at least they could have added a couple of different overalls. They also could have added a few more types of knitted clothing for men such as sweaters and cardigans to stay consistent with the female cast. Children surprisingly got some nice clothes. A decent amount compared to other packs as well as all the same hair meshes from adult sims. Toddlers have a lot seeming they're just toddlers but it's very clear they were just an afterthought. Specifically hair meshes are just the same as the adult ones but resized down which just looks strange on a toddler and feels a bit uncanny valley. Even the welly boots on toddlers were weirdly deformed and clearly just resized down as an afterthought. The pack had some new traits including animal enthusiast and lactose intolerance. It also comes with an aspiration which is like a tutorial for the pack. The women's cast is extremely nice but the men's cast is a little bit ugly. In all though I do think it is generally a good pack when it comes to cast because it has a very strong and coherent theme. The pack gets a 7 out of 10 for creator sim mode. For build mode the pack comes with a decent amount of architecture to create cottages in the game. The theme of the pack is a British countryside and it definitely came through. It comes with tons of nice windows and doors which come in a great variety of swatches to really customize the builds. The pack isn't the biggest when it comes to build stuff but it doesn't matter because there's such a nice variety. The pack comes with stuff for most rooms, tons of decorative objects and some stuff for community lots. I can tell a lot of thought went into the details of everything in the pack and if you like the British countryside aesthetic then I'd say this pack is a must for builders. Even though it doesn't come with much stuff you can definitely create an entire build with it. I try tried really hard to think of things missing from the pack that should have been included but weren't but honestly I can't think of anything other than perhaps a few more community lot items. It's a really nice build by package that I think is perfect for most builders and you can't really fault it that much because it's very well thought through other than just containing not enough items. It's getting a 9 out of 10 for build mode. The world is called Henford upon Bagley and it contains 11 lots with in three neighborhoods. The first neighborhood is the main village area. It contains a starter home which looks really nice and there's a pub lot which again looks really nice. In fact all of the builds in this world look really good and I'm glad effort has been made with them unlike some of the builds in a lot of the older packs. In the main village square there's a gardening stall and a food stall which I'll go over more in the gameplay section. There's also plenty of shops although don't get too excited as you can't enter them. The only interaction available is to browse the shops from the outside which just involves standing there and looking at them. This could have been a game changing moment for The Sims 4 to add a variety of different shops selling different things but of course The Sims 4 is not an ambitious game so that didn't happen. And there are tons of lovely builds here but just when you think you found a lovely place to live in or visit you find out it's just a set piece. The next area is purely residential and again mostly it's just set dressing. It's weirdly very barren and empty too so so I assume EA ran out of budget when making this area. The next area has a national park with a few more residential lots. There's again a lot of set dressing here. It's a very big area and I almost wish the pack included a bicycle to make going around a lot more seamless. I mean there is a bicycle in the pre-order exclusive but that doesn't count. There's a mysterious spiral with a snail in the middle from which you can search and find items. My sim found some black earbuds and lilies for some reason. Apparently there's a traditional 
tradition in the area of hiding things there so you can also hide them back if you don't want them which is what I did. The areas have some wild foxes, rabbits and birds although the spawners for these are very sparse and I think there should have been a lot more to make the world feel more alive although it's nice that there's at least something here other than just plants and frog logs. The world is full of many broken promises unfortunately. You feel like you're being drawn into a magical British countryside but what you're really seeing is just a lot of set dressing. I do praise the world for actually having nice lots and a few bird spawners etc scattered around but just when you think you found something of interest it falls flat as it's nothing you can interact with. It's so disappointing that there are loads of mysterious and magical looking areas but they actually have nothing to do in them. This in addition to the fake village and the fake shops is just a greatly missed opportunity for something special. The world is awful just like every single Sims 4 world is awful. It's getting a 4 out of 10. Cottage living actually has a lot of gameplay that revolves around living off the land. The game has different lot challenges which affect gameplay. One of these adds wild foxes to your lot making looking after animals like chickens more challenging as the foxes might actually eat them. The next one which is arguably a bit more exciting is a simple living lot challenge which basically means living off the land. Unlike the off the grid lot trait which is a little bit similar Similar. This one simply means you can't buy food from the fridge. You have to either purchase or produce all the food you eat yourself. You can also order food online if you can't be bothered to buy it yourself too. There are three NPC animals with the pack, birds, foxes and rabbits. Foxes can attack and kill chickens and wild rabbits, but you can also befriend foxes or shoot them away if they do appear on your lot. If you own a llama or a dog, they can actually chase the foxes away. Rabbits are befriendable and they can help you with gardening and they can give you gifts too. Rabbits can also kill your sim as a new death type so be careful not to anger one. Wild birds don't really do much other than just hang around their spawners. You can interact with them sometimes and they give you gifts and help you but other times they just poo on your shoulder. The NPC animals can also be bought via built mode if you befriend them in the wild and as well as the NPC animals there's also the new caribou animals, chickens, cows and llamas. Again these are bought via built mode. Mode. They require care such as feeding and cleaning. You can harvest produce from them and all animals do age and die just like sims but this can be turned off in the gameplay section of the menu. Chickens are actually quite in depth in this pack. You can have up to eight chickens which produce eggs to use in cooking or to sell. You can incubate eggs to raise more chickens from baby chicks. They can be fed various treats which can either change the color of the eggs or change the quality of the chickens or their eggs. Chickens can also also be traded in for meat which I guess is a more family friendly way of saying butchering them. Cows just like chickens can be fed various treats which affect the milk that they produce. They can be cared for by cleaning them and their barn just like with chickens and you can interact and socialize with them. You can sell them or use the milk that they produce. Llamas utilize the same barn as cows but you can only have one of them at a time. They produce wool which again changes depending on the treats you give them. Llama wool can be used for selling but also trading in with the creature keeper who will change it into clothing for your animals. The creature keeper by the way is a new townie who you can interact with who helps you with living your cottage lifestyle kind of like a tutorial NPC. You can also dress animals in clothing you get from the creature keeper by the way which can be the NPC ones such as rabbits and foxes but also cows and chickens and llamas too. Animal care in general feels fun and relatively in depth and it feels rewarding. It doesn't feel overbearing with looking after their needs as it doesn't really take much time so your sims can also get on with other things too and I think it's been implemented in a very clever way. Cross stitching is a new skill which you can go up to level 5 in. You can make cross stitch pieces small medium or large and use them as decorations or for selling. Llama wool can be very expensive to use for cross stitching so if you want to turn a profit from this it's best to produce the wool yourself. It's a nice little feature it's not massively in depth but it's okay. As well as encouraging normal gardening with the pack. Oversized crops are now a thing and there are new special plant pots which are available. These are larger in size so you can grow the large crops. These can obviously sell for more and be used in the Finchwick Fair. What's the Finchwick Fair you ask? It's a new festival event in the main square in Henford upon Shagley every Saturday in game. They have chicken competitions, egg ones, gardening competitions, pie ones, cow ones, tons of different local competitions to see who has the best one ever in the village. The competition is judged by the local mayor who you can either impress
impress or bribe with whatever you're bringing to show off in the competition. If you win, you get a ribbon, which are new collectibles, depending on which competition you enter. I entered the chicken competition and the egg one, from which you have to submit your best chicken and your best egg. I did both at the fair, although it kind of glitched. Well, I don't know if it was like an oversight or a glitch. The fair was between 3.30 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. And the mayor, for some reason, didn't judge the competitions until about 10 p.m. after the fair had ended. And it just happened very randomly and automatically. And all of the fair objects just suddenly disappeared. And I feel like the game bugged out or it didn't hold the competition correctly or something. But at least I got first place prize. So that's always a bonus. And I got some rewards from it as well as the ribbons. Canning in The Sims 4 Cottage Living now exists. It's a way of preserving food in jars, which is important for those who want self-sufficient sims who live off the land, as obviously the produce stays fresher for longer. At lower levels, you can make basic things like apple jam using apples and sugar, but up to the higher cooking levels, you can make cowberry jam with cow plant berries and other things. As well as eating them, you can also sell them and pack them into picnic baskets and gifting them. With this pack, there are also many small additions. As I just mentioned, picnics are a thing. You can store food in picnic baskets and take them out. Although you can't place the picnic baskets on the floor with a blanket like you could in The Sims 3 base game, which is a bit of a shame. Although you can place them on public benches. Sims can also now run errands for villagers in the cottage living world, which functions like the odd jobs feature did in Island Living. In other words, side quests. These can be performed for money or for items like fertilizer or animal outfits. It's a pretty tiny feature and it's much easier just to do things yourself. I feel like it was just kind of put in the pack for the sake of bulking out, but it doesn't really enhance your gameplay experience in any way meaningful. Cottage Living is basically like Harvest Moon or Story of Seasons, but with a Sims 4 skin on it. I actually think it's one of the strongest expansion packs for The Sims 4 because it has a lot going for it. Granted, I think there is room for some improvement. For example, I would have loved the ability to run a market stall in the town and sell things there. I also think churning milk to butter would have been a nice feature. And seeming that it is a British theme, I definitely think they should have added making tea to the pack. Although really, I actually think the pack is fine as is. And one of the rare few Sims 4 packs that I'd say is actually worth it and adds a ton of incredible new gameplay features. I think Cottage Living makes The Sims 4 a lot more enjoyable and it makes gameplay a lot more fun. It is getting a 9 out of 10 for the gameplay. Having a look at cross pack features, Get Together has clubs such as cross stitching or for caring for animals. With Nifty Knitting, you can knit all of the wearables for all of the animals using llama wool, which is really, really cool. Pets have unique interactions with the animals. For example, dogs can scare away foxes, for example, which is cool. With Parenthood, Child Sims gain character values from looking after the farm animals. With Get Famous, you can be a famous cross stitcher or something. Obviously, the pack also works very, very well with the Seasons pack with all the different gardening and the gardening overhaul that came with Seasons. For a very isolated pack concept, it comes with a sufficient amount of cross pack features that you will notice through gameplay. The pack is meant to be quite isolated rather than a full on experience, so I won't hold it too highly. I actually think this pack is really great for cross pack play and it's very sufficient. It's getting a 10 out of 10. In terms of performance, the aspiration didn't recognize when I completed objectives, so I was stuck in the aspiration. If Sims have the lactose intolerance trait, they will still autonomously eat food containing lactose, meaning they constantly have bad mootlets and they wet themselves, making a mess because they're not able to reach the toilet in time, which is an annoying oversight. I tried to put an outfit on a fox at some point, but when clicking on the action, my sim weirdly walked all the way to a random place, leaving the fox behind. Then the outfit magically appeared on the fox from this weird location, and I have no idea what this was about. Sims can't access the cross stitching box if it's placed on a table, and instead it must be placed on the floor, which I think is a very weird oversight. When ordering a food delivery, the courier entered my house to put the food down, but wouldn't leave and instead stayed in my home doing press ups as well as other annoying things, which was very immersion breaking. The picnic basket is very glitchy and Sims won't do what they're supposed to do and stand up and sit down a million times. Actions cancelled, etc. The usual Sims 4 glitchy stuff. As I said before, there were issues with the Finchwick Festival working. Also, the game tells you that you can purchase special items from the local market stores during the festival 
festival, although this was not possible as the store owners shut down the stores in order to attend the festival, which was weird. The game also suffered from a lot of severe lag, making it unplayable at times for no reason, although I don't know if this is a cottage living issue or just a Sims 4 base game issue. By the way, I always play with mods off and on a new save file for these reviews. Bugs should be a rarity, not a common occurrence. If a big feature like the fair not working is happening, then it definitely ruins the immersion. Although I wouldn't say the bugs were huge. I wouldn't say they broke the game and made a very serious annoyance, but more so just a moderate underlying annoyance. The pack is getting a 6 out of 10 for performance. So in all, my total overall score of the pack is 7.5 out of 10. I definitely think Cottage Living delivers on its promises in order to make it kind of like a Stardew Valley farming simulator. It definitely has everything there. And I think the way it's been implemented means that you can really enjoy using this pack for quite a long time. It's still a Sims 4 pack at the end of the day. So it still comes with all of the standard Sims 4 issues. But for what it's worth, I would honestly say this is one of the strongest Sims 4 packs we definitely have. And a very rare occasion where I feel like a lot of passion has actually gone into a Sims 4 pack. I really wish every other Sims 4 pack was this ambitious because it feels really fun to use and play with. And if you like the kind of cozy farming experience, then I definitely think you will enjoy the pack for all it has to offer. If you appreciated this review, I have a whole playlist full of brutally honest reviews that I update all the time for all of the Sims 4 packs. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this one. I'll see you in the next one.